Dax Harwood versus the plumber. Plumber Moxley opened the episode. For what reason, you might ask? Just like everybody would add, there is no re. It's a rib, right? Now on Dax, is this? They're the best in-ring tag team in the business now that Jay Briscoe is gone. Even though they've been booked putridly and stumbled over the buckaroos getting in their path of being used prominently. But why do they insist on breaking the team up? And then, and, and not that I want to bestow this fate on Cash Wheeler, but he's goddamn as good as Dax is. And they're both better than 95% of the wrestlers on the AEW roster. Why do they break them up and constantly put Dax in singles matches that he never, ever, ever wins? And somehow, I don't want to be a spoiler here, but somehow they managed to not only put him in a singles match and beat him, just choke him out flat in the middle of the ring, <laughs> then have his partner save him and beat him up and choke him out too. Is it a rib? Why would you use the fucking Puddin gang, Muffin Top Taylor and his friend Trent? Why would you use them? Well, why would you use them at all? That's a question. But why would you even use them this badly for this long? Well, before you explain to the listeners exactly what you're talking about, remember I told you I saw a few episodes of Collision that you didn't see? Yes. And there were FTR segments where they got beat down, I think by the House of Black. And it was, it, it was like, it's hard to explain, just Dax laying there selling. It almost looks like it's real, like the soul is getting stomped <laughs> out of him. And he's realizing what is happening. But it doesn't, uh... The booking of FTR has been atrocious since a while back. Well, and that's, again, there was no reason for a lot of the matches Tony books, but there's no reason for this. And somebody's going to say, well, they did an angle on collision. Yeah, I know. I'm saying there's no reason for this. And... It, again, because Dax never wins a single match, you know what's going to happen, but it's also going to be... In normal cases, a good match. In this case, the best that anybody could do with the fucking plumber, who is unwatchable. Um, and I wrote at the top, can even Dax make this schlub look like something? And it, I was torn from the start because it was mostly a Moxley kind of fucking thing. Within the first minute, Moxley kissed Dax and then Dax kissed him back. No matter what he's doing, Dax's shit looks halfway professional, and it looks like it connects, or he knows what he's doing in the ring, and he looks physically presentable. Moxley's shit is sloppy or weak or both. And, you know, he had to do Moxley's shit, which is chopping and biting. And every once in a while, Moxley thinks he's Hoist Gracie, and he's going to stretch somebody. There wasn't the normal amount of Moxley's bullshit. They didn't go out into the goddamn arena in the concession stand or stay out on the floor for five minutes at a time, but they still had slap fights and, you know, bullshit that Moxley does. And then at one point, they had a fight on the turnbuckle, and Dax took the bump off and was laying there for Moxley to apparently come off the top or whatever, but he laid there motionless for 20 seconds while Moxley just sat on the turnbuckle doing nothing, like he's selling Dizzy. Maybe he was concussed again. But that's what and I was talking about with Dax. I've seen him sell multiple times just motionless, and it's... Well, because he was waiting for the motherfucker to do something. He didn't want to move and have the guy come off the top rope and land on his face that happens with a regular basis over there in that company. <laughs> but he's laying there. Well, the, the spot is that he's going to jump up and run to the corner and climb up and superplex Moxley. But the idea was that when he would take the bump, Moxley would do something to indicate that he was going to come off the top rope and then Dax would jump up and run up there. Well, instead, Moxley just sits on the top rope with that dumb, dopey, Gomer Pyle look on his fucking wretched face. 
And then Dax jumped up and got up on the turnbuckle, and Moxley not only fed Dax his head, but visibly grabbed Dax's arm and put it over his head and put himself in the fucking superplex. He is the fakest looking professional wrestler in the fucking business today. Plumber fucking Moxley. So then they made the five minute remaining call. So at least they listened last week. Because they're not going to a draw. But now if they actually call that every once in a while, people might not know for sure. And they did back at the pile drivers were two counts. And Dax hit a nice brain buster on him. That was a two count. And then Dax went to headbutt him off the top rope and Moxley just turned and grabbed him in a choke as he landed and choked him out. And then wouldn't let go. And then Cash came in and got on Moxley and Claudio came in and they choked both of them out. <clears throat> What, what they do at FTR what? never makes you want to see them get even with the people that did it to them. It just makes you want it all to go away. Yeah, or make you believe that they could if they tried. Remember here about a year ago when the people would stand up as soon as they heard the music, stand up and cheer, and yeah, at FTR, at FTR. And now it's, hey, but they've managed to beat that passion out of the fans for FTR by beating them, marginalizing them, hiding them. They had the best tag team match in the history of television last summer. And these jack-off fucking Mexican interchangeable mass dipshits and these fucking featherweight fucking independent outlaw mud show Japanese girls and this interchangeable parade of indie-rific morons that Tony brandishes in front of us on a weekly basis and he's not got room to use the only really competent quality talented tag team he has on his roster fucking hell mm. any other comments on this contest no i didn't like it at all i hate moxley's matches even physically it's like he's not I don't know. He used to be in better shape. So now he's trying to portray himself as a bigger badass than ever before, and he's not even looking as impressive as he used to. And the BCC stuff, just overall. When has it been a help to the booking or the company, the BCC? Moxley's great idea. Hit Moxley and Claudio and Danielson with Regal. You know, again, then, they're being put over so strong here. Why? Wait, wait. Who was the other one? Wheeler Yuta. Where's he? That's a good question. He just dis a fucking peered. Oh, God. I hope they don't bring him in because then you get him against Garcia because Garcia is <laughs> FTR's young boy now. <laughs> but yeah, if anybody uh, has any milk in their refrigerator, see if there's a picture of Wheeler Yuta on the carton. Is that a dated reference? Will the young folks get that one? Do they still do that? Yeah, I don't know, because it was kind of almost dated when I was a kid, but people understood the reference because a lot of people made it. I don't know if people make it as much anymore because they don't make jokes about missing kids like they used to. Well, you know, that's all we used to do. <laughs> we were kids, make fucking jokes about the ones that we couldn't find. But I'll tell you what, well, it, but it, I may have missed that reference anyway. If they want to find Moxley, they need to put his picture on a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> 